Hello friends, welcome back. I want to make a bytecode for our Ruby compiler, Natalie. So we already have these instructions that are generated internally uh, before we turn our Ruby script into C++ and run it through GCC or Clang, uh, we generate these intermediate instructions and this is what we walk to generate our C++. But they're beautiful and uh, it'd be really cool if there was a way to write these to a file uh, where each byte you know meant something uh, aka a byte code and then we could rehydrate that back into those instructions and I have some ideas on how I want to use that maybe for a an interpreter written in C++ that takes the byte code and anyway so that'll be another video so uh, for now though I want to focus on trying to turn these five instructions for for the hello world into a uh, sort of binary representation, a, a set of bytes that we can write to a file. Okay, let's get started. So I uh, already kind of been looking at this. I, you know, call it cheating if you will. Uh, but I know here, somewhere here, I want to copy this and make a new one called dash B and byte code, compile to byte code, delete the rest of that. And let's say byte code is true. And then over in the compiler, right before we do any interpreting or walking the tree to generate the C++, we're going to do it right here. We're going to say if options bytecode and path is options compile, I think. Let's just make sure. Yeah, we set the path here. It's a little bit weird, uh, but that's fine. And then we want to loop over the instructions, instruction, and we want to uh, let's for now let's do it this way: instruction dot serialize serialize dot bytes. That way I can look at individual bytes, and I kind of want to map them to hex uh, b b dot two i sixteen. I think that'll make it easier later when we're doing um, our hex dump. Uh, okay, so that's going to blow up. What reason is it? Uh, what reason is it going to blow up? If I do hello dot, can I just do dash? No, I can do hello dot b. Okay, and at some point we're going to want to cat the hello dot b, but for now, undefined method each for instruction manager. Okay. Uh, apparently we never implemented that. We have each with index. So this is an easy change. We'll run this again. Undefined method serialize for push self. Oh yeah. Now we're getting into the meat. Um, push self instruction. And this is where we want to teach each instruction. I mean, we have a lot. We have a lot of instructions, right? We go with 96 of them. Uh, we want to teach them how to serialize, serialize themselves. Uh, and I want to have a thing called an instruction number, which I don't have yet. And then I want to use a ray pack, which I already have some docs up for somewhere. Uh, where are they at? Yeah, I'm totally stealing this idea from Prism. They have this really cool way of packing uh, the AST and uh, uh, passing it between C and um the C library and uh, another program using FFI. So I'm totally learning a lot from, from using that. Um, but we're going to use a ray pack and we're going to take um, the different uh, directives. So I, I always have trouble finding like a really good source, like a really succinct source for these. Um, yeah, this one's a little bit easier to read. So let me make it dark. Sorry. Uh, Capital C is an 8-bit unsigned number, and I think that's what we want for this here because um, the push self instruction takes no args and it does one very simple thing. So all I need to do to pack this is to pack an 8-bit number. 8-bit should be fine for um, all of our instructions. We only have 96 currently. I can't imagine we'll have more than 255, and if we do, we can fix it later. Uh, but I need this instruction number, and what's the best way to do that? How about instead of manually assigning them, why don't I do class self on the base instruction where this gets inherited from? I'm going to say uh, def 
inherited. I don't remember if that's right or not. Subclass. This is like a hook in Ruby. We could say subclass number uh, dot instruction number is at number plus equals one. So we increment it and set it in one go. Uh, we also need an adder accessor on every child called instruction number and then uh, we'll have a little convenience method instruction number self dot class dot instruction number that's the interface I want and uh, will it work wrong number of arguments given one expected uh, oh okay okay I did two I and I meant two s that is the reason for that and look at that, we got a 48. So presumably the instruction number that was assigned to push self is in hex, it's a 48. Um, I guess I could verify that. I'm just gonna trust it. Uh, so now we want to do it for the push string instructions. This is where it's gonna be really fun. Uh, so let's do, 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 push self. Let's copy this, go to push string and paste it down here. And I'm going to need some more room. So we're always going to start with the instruction number. And then we're going to need um, a byte size and a string. Okay, so for the byte size, it could be big, I guess. Um, you could, I suppose, have a 64-bit, uh, you know, a, a length of a string that needs, needs 64 bits to represent. So let's do a capital Q for 64-bit unsigned. Uh, we'll say Q here and byte size. So we need to, in our encoding, include the size of the string first. And then that way, the as we're reading it back out, we'll know how many bytes to read to get the, the string. So this would be the actual string next. Did I put an, I don't know why I put an exclamation point there. I think I wanted Q. And then we want a string, which is string directive, capital A, arbitrary binary string, space padded, count is width. How about lowercase a, null padded, count is width. Okay, so I think we want that. And then I need the byte size here to tell array pack how many bytes to pack in there. Um, yeah. So put comma there. So Ruby LSP is complaining. It's having trouble updating itself. So sometimes it just complains about something that's not even there anymore. Uh, it's very, very weird. Uh, so, oh, I don't even need this cat. Oh, I will. Oh, that's fine. Uh, did that work? So 49 is the instruction number in hex, and then we've got a B. So is that right? Yeah, that might be right. Examples. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello world is two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven bytes long, and a B is 11 in hex. Uh, this is the eight bytes representing the number. Look at that bad boy. So it needs eight bytes to potentially encode a 64 bit number. So, uh, I guess that works. And then we've got H E L L O space W O R L D. And we've encoded the whole string and that whole instruction. Ah, it's so cool. Okay, uh, next is we want to do um, push arg count. Push arg count. Uh, push arg count instruction. Uh, do, 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 do. And we need the count here. Uh, what is the count going to be? Uh, how many args can you reasonably have? What if we did a 16-bit number? Uh, that would seem okay, right? Capital S. So what does that look like? Nope. 
uh, 3a for the instruction number and a 1 and a 0 for the arg count, which is just a 1, just one arg. Um, if I recall, dp1. So this is the arg count and we're working on, yeah, that looks good. So now we need a, need one for send instruction. Uh, let's copy this, send instruction, and let's paste that there. And we'll say instruction number. And so we need quite a few things. We need uh, all of this stuff. So the message can be a string message string is at message i think it's a symbol by uh already so we'll turn it back into string and then we need message string dot byte size followed by the message string followed by these other bits that are just booleans and i don't think there's a way to do a bool with the packs with packing stuff so i think i'm just gonna have to do a one or a zero for all of these receiver self with block these are all bulls yeah 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 so kind of what we did earlier we'll say that um push string was q for the size a by size so i want to copy this Okay, same thing, yes. And this is message string that byte size. Followed by C C C C. We'll use eight bits for all of these. I was looking at Prism and that's what they did for all their Booleans. They did this one or zero thing and they did a C. Um, I think that there's a way to do a bit string where is it? I don't, I don't even see it on here. I saw it on one of the other. Um, you can pack individual bits, but uh, I think that's going to get really hard to read. So let's just go with one byte. It's not that wasteful. Uh, so one byte for each Boolean. Is that all I need? C, Q. Let me just go over it one at a time. Q, and then the string. And then these four deals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's run that. And we got our instruction number followed by the length of the message. Ah, is the message really gonna be that big though? Why would you send a message that big? I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna do an L. That way it's just four bytes. That's a little more reasonable, I think. So it's gonna be a 32-bit uh, number uh, worth of, of string. Okay, so puts is P U T S, and then we've got four Boolean flags, one or zero. That looks good. And then uh, I think the last one is pop. So serialized for pop is going to be sort of like push self. I'm just going to copy this, put a uh, pop instruction. I'm going to copy this here. And. Oh boy, did I forget to call it exit? Okay, well, I lost that one. Uh, okay. So what is it doing? Oh yeah, I did forget to call it exit. Okay, that's, that's part of the problem. Um, but I wanted to write it to a file. I don't want it to print it out anymore. I want to say out, out is this, oh, we could just do this, file.open path, right, do out, uh, file, and file.write, um, but I don't want the bytes like that. I, do I just want? Yeah, I just want it serialized. Maybe. Cat hello dot b. Oh, look at that. Hex dump. Uh hex dump. How do you do that? Uh 
canonical. Yeah, capital C. So if we kind of look this over, does this look does this look kind of close? Um, it looks very close. Forty nine. That goes till here. Goes to sixty four, and then we get a three A one zero for this instruction, and then we get a four F four. Zero 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 seventy seventy five seventy four seventy three and then our four flags followed by a thirty seven for the pop and there we go we have our bytecode that was pretty fun okay so let's let's call this video done and I will make another video where we'll do the next step um man I'm I'm so excited I don't know what the next step is gonna be. Do I, do I make the opposite side where we read that back in? Hmm, hmm maybe, maybe. Okay, let's, let's commit what we have. So we added a new flag and we added um, a way to count, you know, to the number of the instructions. And then we added a serialized method to five instructions and we added a each. And then we added a way to write that to a file. Cool, cool, cool. So let's do in um, bytecode out. And we'll say C uh, start work on bytecode generation. And um, let's push it up. That's it. That's fun. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out. I hope uh, I hope that you'll come back for the next one where we do something with the bytecode. Do we read it back in? I think that might be the next step. Because um, what I want to do, well, I, yeah, I don't want to tell you yet. Just come back for the next video. Uh, thanks for hanging out. I hope you had hope you had fun, and I hope you learned something. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.